Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jeff in Control Robinson over at EvilGeniuses.net, and you have won the prize once again. You have found yourself sitting in front of your screen, about to be uh, a little bit of knowledge bombed. A little bit of knowledge bomb for y'all. So we're going to talk about some PVT here in just a moment. The map is Antigua Shipyard. The matchup is PVT, like we said. I will be your Protoss host, and our opponent today is Dignitas Select, a fantastic Terran player. Um, actually living in Seattle, Washington, my home state, so he is forever awesome for that, at least. The build I want to talk about is something that I will, I will accredit to Feast, the uh, Dutch player, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I think he's, Bel he's uh, from Belgium. You know what? He's from Europe. The guy's freaking awesome. Um, he's under the tutelage of uh, Grubby. Another great Protoss player, but together they've kind of formed a strategy that's really cool. It's a, it's a very pressure-oriented opening where everything's pretty normal. You're still going to do a one-gate expand. Um, it could be with one or two gas. I'm going to do it with one gas because that's kind of just the way I do things. Um, but the idea is you're going to get up from that one gate to four gates pretty quick. You're going to warp in stalkers anywhere between kind of six, seven uh, to ten, something in that realm. And you're going to apply pressure to your opponent. And it's really just that simple. Um, we're going to talk about where we go from there and, of course, get into the more technical side of things. But the idea here is we're making enough stalkers where we're going to challenge that first bunker. And really, we're going to force the Terran into a tough spot. Either they're doing a tech and they now have to show their tech, or they were doing like a fast third command center. They were getting caught adding tech labs and reactors to everything that they have. Um, basically, if this attack hits at an inopportune time for the Terran, they're completely dead. If it hits at an inopportune time for the, us as Protoss players, meaning like they're in a position to defend it, then we actually just come away from it okay, but with really good information. Now, a lot of you would be saying, well, what's the cost in control? I mean, what, what happens? Really, there is no cost. The only problem would be is if you miss micro and lose too much, or if you're not managing your economy back at home during the harassment phase. It's really important that we note you have got to be continuously building probes. You've got to be chrono boosting said probes because we're not reliant on this attack doing severe amounts of damage. This is not a timing attack. This is not an all in. This is simply an alternative opening that I want you guys to start at least toying with, okay? Because this is actually my adaptation of it. This is not copying, <clears throat> you know, build for build uh, exactly what Feast does. This is me seeing him taking an idea and uh, me being like, hmm. Let's see if I can do it a little bit differently, maybe even better, dare I say. So you want to have a pylon near the front of the harassment phase. Does it have to be this early? Absolutely not, but it does have to go down at some point in time. I needed a pylon. I figured he wouldn't find it. There we go. I mean, there is a good chance he could go scout and then I'd look really silly, but in this case, as I've picked this video, <laughs> there's a good chance that that doesn't happen because uh, that would be kind of silly if I embarrassed myself there. Now you can see the Stalkers and Zealots are kind of coming out. These were walked out by that gateway pre-warp gate. Um, and just to kind of update you on what's going on back at home, let's look at that Harvester count. I'm still maintaining a slight edge on the Terran player, and that's how it should be, by the way. This is not like me pointing out some super secret awesome thing that I've done. If you actually watch your replays and you have equal or fewer numbers of probes to SCVs, you are not chrono boosting your probes enough. So I spent about two or three chrono boosts on my cybernetics core for that warp gate upgrade. The rest of them went on probes. And that's so that I can have a decent number of probes. Now, even just with the one gas, I want to make sure I have 16 probes on those minerals. And then I want to set the rally point over here to get that going too. Because uh, as silly as it is, stalkers, they do cost quite a bit of gas, right? 50 gas. But I actually have enough gas stockpiled from this one gas because I haven't built a sentry. Okay, that's really important to note. We actually want to sacrifice the sentry production so we can get out that extra two stalkers so we can start building on that stalker count already. So we can see here I did chrono boost this gateway just to get out some more. And that's partly because he's actually kind of pushing out to attack. But this is normal stuff. Terran players do this. They push out. They, they kind of get it. I mean, this is their version of that kind of thing. They're just doing it with much more fragile guys. So here I come. And I'm like, well, sure, I'll take some of your, your uh, Marines off your hand. I do lose that stalker, and that's just silly micro. You really shouldn't lose that stalker. But then here comes the good stuff, okay? So with these zealots to anchor the damage, because he only does have marauders, I'm actually going to focus down his SCVs, because again, guys, this is not a timing attack. This is not an all-in. I don't need to kill him with this. I need to do damage. And as we can see, the zealots are making that bunker problematic, because they do so much damage um, and, and take so little from those marauders, respectively. 
but look at the income tab, okay? Uh, there it is, 22 SCVs lost. That is a lot of SCVs dead, guys. That's a lot of SCVs dead. And that means the damage is done. So now what I'm gonna do, because of that success, I'm gonna sit out here and I'm gonna continue to apply pressure. These zealots are unfortunately, um, well, they're slotted for death. There's no way they're gonna make it out of it, but all they're trying to do is give me pot shots to be taken with my stalkers. Now back at home, where do we go from here? Okay, so as we can see, I have been building more probes. I've taken my second gas. I've even taken a third gas. My probe count's starting to get a lot higher, especially in relation to our opponent who suffered tremendous losses. Um, and my gateway count's fairly similar, but what is this? A really, really fast third nexus. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good place to go ahead and start experimenting with that really fast third nexus. We see Protoss players in Korea doing this all the time, but they're doing it just as kind of a counter to the natural um, production phases of the Terran player. They're not really instigating or causing a scenario where that's going to be particularly strong. They're actually just kind of doing it off the metagame, so to speak. They're challenging the Terran play players in the way they, they typically play by changing the way we Protoss players play to put the ball in our court. But in this case, I, I really like this style because this allows me to kind of force my Terran opponent into a predictable place. Right now, I know he's going Marine Marauder. I absolutely know that the only tech path he's probably going towards is going to go ahead and be that star port for medevacs. That makes the most sense, right? You don't go Marine Marauder, Thor Banshee. You know, that's, that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense because they don't work together that way. Why did you go the Marauders? Um, in this case, I know exactly what he's doing. He doesn't have that much of an idea of what I'm doing. He probably thinks this is like a six gate or five gate, some kind of gateway timing. But we're actually going to pull a fast one on him by skipping tech and going straight to the large production macro phase. So what that means, to highlight what I just got done saying, is we're gonna skip tech. No robo, no early Twilight Council, more gateways, and maybe forges, if you feel comfortable doing that. So here we go, boom, boom, boom. That's a lot of gateways, that's seven gateways off of potentially two bases, but as we can see, it's actually three bases. So we transfer probes over there, start saturating. Meanwhile, back at his place, 25 SCVs dead. Um, he's kind of skimping it together, man. He's going to have a tough time from there. So what we know is he could probably drop us. So we're in position to defend that. If he wants to come to the front, okay. We've got the beginnings of a, a defense there as well. And I think he does a little bit of both. <clears throat> so he's poking at the front, kind of getting my attention. And it works. Pulls me away. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, I'll be back over there. And just off the sheer production, this is going to get held off. This is now eight gateways, ladies and gentlemen. Eight gateways. No upgrades, no forge, no, uh, no Twilight Council, no Robo. But because I held off that phase of the attack, I do feel confident that I can actually go ahead and start um, either being aggressive or teching or macroing. And in this case, it looks like I'm going to be aggressive. Now, he's going to try to drop, but under the sheer weight of my production, he's in trouble. Meanwhile, my army was out on the field. Now he's the guy that's in trouble. That's what his Doom Drop was trying to achieve, is what I'm doing right now, and that is having my army appear at the most inconvenient place at the most inconvenient time. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. So these zealots are kind of walking off, buying myself time, killing SCVs. And if you look at that supply, it's really starting to take shape in, in favor for me. Inside, he's taking some pretty good damage. Um, but you can see Select being the fantastic player he is, despite all his losses, despite the odds being completely stacked against him, He's actually starting to muster a pretty good defense, and it's off the back of these medevacs. It's also harassing me, but that ends just now, the medevac being picked off. So things have kind of stabilized, and he's lost 48 frickin' SCVs, man. And that's less part of the, the uh, opener, but again, I, I can't actually work too far off from that opener without giving it credit, because I did kill 20, you know, like 25 SCVs at the very beginning which means Select is forced to do desperate things like drop me, like focus on a doom drop, that kind of thing. As we can see, I've dislodged his natural, so back at home, that's when we can take the luxury to start teching. And the reason I'm pointing that out, um, because obviously, let's look at it this way. I'm miles ahead, okay? So 65 probes to 18 SCVs. I'm not gonna try to make this video about how amazing, like, you know, like, we're not gonna go from this point forward and be like, okay, every decision I make is the perfect one, and like, He's just in such, you know, he's just getting outplayed ter terribly. That's not the case. Select is a monster of a player. Uh, in previous matches, he's the guy dropping manor mules on me and laughing his way to victory. Like, it's, it's definitely 
uh, something that this strategy has allowed me to, to show off in this game, and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Killing 23 SCVs out of the gate, applying enough pressure to get a read on what he's doing, and then pulling a fast one on him by taking a super fast third. This is the kind of stuff that you guys at home can absolutely do. But it's really important that we notice there are a time and a place for everything. And up until this time and this place, I had zero tech. It was just gateways. Okay, there's nowhere on this map where you're going to find a hidden Twilight Council or a Robo or something like that. And again, the reason for that is because we want to be able to afford to build consistent probes because when we take a fast third, it really taxes our probe production, right? You don't have uh, you know, 90 probes sitting around waiting to max saturate every base you have. You actually probably have significantly less than that. It's like 42, 45. So it's important that we're able to produce continuous probes so we can actually start to enjoy that three base economy as opposed to just kind of imagine the potential of those three, that, that three base economy. So constant probe production, constant gateway production to hold off those drops, to hold off that frontal assault, and uh, in some situations even to return the favor, which is what we end up getting to do this time around. But now that things have kind of slowed down, I can't really rely on cracking this ramp. Could I have continuously produced stuff and tried to do that? Sure, but if it gets to a point where he's at like six or seven medevacs, and he's got enough marine and marauder where he's cutting me down at a huge, huge uh, cost-benefit analysis for in his favor, then we're in trouble. That's, that's where we can take a massive lead and end up losing that game. So that's where we kind of fall back on, on plan B, which is to just take our advantage and to tech further up. So I'm going to go double forge, and then fairly soon I'm going to go Twilight Council. Why not Robo? Well, I'm not going to go Robo against this because, and actually, ironically, I do try to crack that ramp, and here we go, I'm in danger now. Um, Robo takes a while to develop, right? I already have the gateways in place to make a ton of stalkers and zealots. Why not go Twilight Council so that I can, again, kind of just utilize what I'm working with already? Now, I knew he was going to try to drop me, so we do have cannons going up to make sure that even with my guys outside of uh, position, I can go ahead and hold that attack off in the future. And he does a really smart thing and shows up and just focuses down the Nexus. Now, it's going to cost him the lives of all these uh, Marauders, so what he's trying to do is focus down like all the stalkers as we see there and, and get them off the map with his units that are going to be dead anyways. The good news for me though is I have a lot of Chromos at my disposal because again I've been working with three Nexi for most of this game so I'm able to instantly rebuild, Chrono Boost out probes, you can still see I'm working with a massive Harvester lead and then with all these units and now the 101 upgrades I'm pretty much, and again if you, if you take a look select just at one attack with one armor just now started that's because again he's been spending all his money just trying to survive. <clears throat> Pretty bad force fields there, but still, this is my game to lose, and it's again because of that early game harassment, kind of figuring out what he's doing. Here, it's a nice little read, kind of getting a, a feel for what he's trying to do, again, with the doom drop. Terran's very strong in the space trade situations, and he wants to say, hey, if you want to trade bases right now, that'd be fantastic, because yours is worth a hell of a lot more than mine. And that's very unfortunate, I move right out of the way. But kind of a cool thing here is, again, with how much production I have, I mean, look at this. He lands. He's got the bigger army. He's being really annoying, killing one of the forges, killing the Twilight Council, holding off his army, but it buys me enough time to get there. And still that supply lead is in my favor. And again, that's just because of how much damage we did early on. Not necessarily because of the decisions made after that, except for to hold off on that tech. The blink down, make this really problematic for him. So again, blink is a, a good first option off of this as well, because what you're having a tough time dealing with are those drops, because you've kind of put off your tech, and he's the guy that should have the better tech at that time. But as we can see here, it's just sheer manpower. DT is now moving out, going to go ahead and cause some trouble for his economy. And in a stand-up fight, I'm the guy with the good upgrades at two armor, one attack as well as having Blink making it every time he fights with me. He's, he's not really, he doesn't really have a, a backup plan, can't get away from there. Meanwhile, his economy is being cut down to pieces inside his base as well. Every time he has to scan, that's really problematic as well because he wants to be dropping those mules, getting himself that little extra money. And uh, this you don't necessarily have to do. But I mean, from this point forward, the game's pretty much mine. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure I'm not getting robbed here by like a hidden Terran base, really smart. And I'm also expanding for myself, because to be quite honest, because of the early harass phase, I've actually mined out my main and national for the most part. So despite my strong economy earlier, I am just on three bases, but only one of them is mining. So it's really important to secure this base. So if I lost this army, 
trying to attack up here and just end the game. There's a very good chance all he has to do is kill this and then maybe disrupt this mining and then all of a sudden it's like this really sad story where it's like, you know that game against Select where I had like a gigantic lead that I lost? Yeah, that felt terrible. You don't want to have that story, man. So I just got done checking for every base, but right here we're going to cover all our bases. You can see I've replicated this by dropping a, pro, a pile in there. And now we're just going to drop pylons here as well to make sure that he does not pull a fast one on me and get a bigger economy than he's earned. He needs to use his army to get that bigger economy. I don't want to give him a freebie by just not having scouted it. So he's going to push out and select being the fantastic player he is. He's decided, you know what, I could just try to expand here. I mean, I'm going to do it because I've got nothing else to do. But these SCVs are going to become a part of my army because that's my only chance to actually come back into this game and win. Um, unfortunately for him, he's just outgunned. This is an army that's twice as the size of his. Significantly better upgrade. Let's see here. Yep, three armor, one attack. Two attack along the way. Again, he's probably just on 1-1. One, one. Yep, can't afford to do anything else. Loads up for a Doom Drop. And, uh, you know, select your time for this Earth is uh, not much longer, at least in this game. DT harassing there. DT making sure he can't expand there. And that's how we play that. But again, I kind of want to just harken back to the beginning of that game. Um, it's really important that we note that, again, every decision made after that, that opening stage looks brilliant and it's awesome. And, and certainly you guys can take away um, some pretty important and cool stuff from that. But let's not kid ourselves. I was advantaged severely. Um, and I know I've said this like five times, but I really want to labor this point so that you guys, or belabor it rather, so that you guys can um, utilize this to your own advantage. But... Killing 23 SCVs because we focused those SCVs are trying to hold onto that bunker so that he doesn't die to the early game harass. That is where the game was actually won. And we did it by having two or three zealots anchoring the damage while our stalkers fo focus fired all those SCVs, perhaps a few marauders sitting outside the bunker so we don't take too much damage. And from that point forward, select. He's the guy in the hot seat. He's got to make amazing decisions. He's got to make perfect micro um, executions, and he's the guy that's got to come back from a nearly insurmountable um, disadvantage. Whereas for me, I can afford to make mistakes. I can make um, really bold decisions like taking a fast third and holding off on tech until his natural is disrupted because I put myself in that privileged place. So again, let's go ahead and give credit where credit's due. This is something that inspired me off of Feast. You'll see me practicing it on my stream, which you guys can check out on Twitch TV. But there'll be a lot of videos posted here at evilgenius.net. We're going to talk about decisions um, and things like this. Whether you agree or disagree with it, guys, the most important part is the conjecture. Take your own thoughts, take your own opinions, and place them up against mine. Don't take it as the gospel truth, and uh, come away with your own better formulated opinion. Or, if you're more of a novice player or somebody that just didn't simply think about things this way, maybe this is the first time you've heard about it, and the best thing you could do is take these concepts and go apply them to your own gameplay and check it out for yourself. But until then, I will see you guys later.